This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above at the top of the screen and everything that we're talking about here today. Let's go ahead and get started. We got a lot to talk about. Bitcoin, over $15,000. Pretty amazing. I've got a question for everybody here out here in the audience. Are we about to see the bull run of 2017 and 2018 again? And if so, is it going to absolutely just crush what that was in 2017, 2018 with the new institutional level money into this space and even the growth of the market that we've had in in uh, market cap and cryptocurrency as a whole. Let's just go ahead and get into this. One thing we do know before we get started down this path today is the Justice Department, that's right, the Department of Justice seizes $1 billion in recently moved Silk Road crypto. Now, this move follows a widespread crackdown of the Department of Justice on crypto. So, listen, I, I think this is just as great a sign as anything else as we could, that we could see to let us know that we are about to see this entire market open up so wide. And I believe it goes from a bull run to just what I believe we've been in for the last, you know, uh, several handful of weeks is a bull market, not just a bull run. But the question here is, are we about to see a bull run? Now, let's get into some news really quickly before that jumps off, because Visa is to face U.S. antitrust suit over played acquisition. Now, this is interesting because... You know, these big conglomerates out here and this conversation, as far as I'm concerned, extends a lot further than just Visa and the plate acquisition here. And it's to widen their uh, footprint when it comes to payments in the digital payment space. So that is something we will keep an eye on. But I think this question of antitrust issues goes much further than just Visa and Plaid. I think this antitrust issue should extend into the Twitters, the Facebooks, and things of that nature that are absolutely so big. I would like to see them even uh, busted up a little bit. Wouldn't hurt. Wouldn't hurt at all. Uh, and I think we get some more competition in the space is what the space could really use. And then we'd see, uh, you know, a decrease in uh, censorship because whether I'm for whatever's being censored or not, I don't think anybody should be censored. That's the whole point. We get the best out of one another when we actually give each other a voice. And that's really what freedom of speech is. And that's why, just real quick, while I'm on that soapbox, why I've pushed in, in this morning's video and said, you know, we need blockchain voting. We need an immutable ledger when it comes to voting. This has been an absolute circus of epic proportions. And let's face it, ladies and gentlemen, it's 2020. This shouldn't happen. And I tell you the truth, look, I, I you know, I don't really uh, subscribe to either of the major parties for political affiliation. But the thing is, it's scary to just see what is taking place. And I've seen it on both sides. And it's just as an observer of this, as a citizen in the U.S., there's got to be a better way. And I think we all know that there is a better way. More so, and more consumers are... Listen to this about the acquisition here from Visa really quickly. It's 50 seconds. Let's catch this and then we'll move on with the rest of the news. By the way, PayPal news coming up next. More and more consumers are using apps on their phones to make payments. Visa is now making a big investment. The company announced it would purchase Plaid. The cost, $5.3 billion. One in four people use the financial technology company, which connects their bank to an app like Venmo or Robinhood. The president of Visa tells Fortune fintechs are clearly reshaping financial services, and Plaid is unquestionably the leader in this space. The company says the deal will help expand its traditional debit and credit card solutions into a broader set of money movement services. 3.4 billion people use Visa's debit card services globally. 
3.4 billion people using the service. I, I tell you, you know, there is something to be said about where we're going. And I tell you what, I don't know about you, but we're going there really quickly, I believe, at this point. Just a side note about Visa, Plaid, Ripple, and MoneyGram. Additionally, on a related note, Ripple invested in MoneyGram a few years ago recently, as well as pledging significant grants to, and MoneyGram partnered with Visa recently for a new debit card uh, deposit service, making all three related indirectly. Just wanted to drop that on everybody so you knew that there was a connection, uh, whether it be directly or indirectly. We like to keep an idea on all these things. Now, let's change gears and go to PayPal and cryptocurrency and the terms of service and the things that we need to know about. What Some of the key takeaways here you need to understand. If you buy crypto on PayPal, which is great, and it's opening up to 300 million users. I think it is nothing but upside for us as crypto holders. 20 million of those 300 million users are also merchants. Now, merchants aren't going to accept Bitcoin or XRP or Litecoin, okay? But what it is going to do is give you the opportunity to buy crypto, hold the crypto, sell it, flip it back to cash, and then spend that crypto with a merchant, if you will. So, and they'll get the cash that they want. But what you need to understand is, one, there's no private keys issued. So it's just like if I were to send you money because you bought, I don't know, a an old soccer ball I had, right, or an, or an old car, and I, I PayPal'd you the money, and let's say it was just a clunker, right? I just paid you 500 or 1000 bucks for a clunker. And I send it to you PayPal. When you sign into your PayPal, that money's there, right? That money's there, and there's no uh, code or secret key that you need. It's going to be the same approach with your crypto. You're not going to hold any private keys. They'll hold the crypto, but they do, they do uh, express in the language that you own the crypto. They're just holding it in the PayPal app for you as they would the money that somebody, I or somebody had sent you for a clunker car, right? So they're guaranteeing you that the money's there as long as you have your account. Another key thing you want to remember, whether it's PayPal or exchanges, if you go to change your email and you didn't think before you changed your email to get that new email associated with wherever your crypto is, you're running a real risk of potentially losing your crypto forever. And that's not PayPal related. That's just a friendly little reminder from me about holding crypto on exchanges. And same goes for having a new phone and things of that nature for your two-factor verification and things. Before you do upgrades, before you do stuff like that, make sure you understand what you need to do to stay within good standing of getting your phone and all of that security straight before getting a new phone and not having any hangups whatsoever. Make sure you have that right. Okay. Now, aside from that, coming specifically back to PayPal here, you know, you don't have the private keys and you don't hold the crypto. They hold it for you, but it is your crypto. They make that very clear. However, what I will say that I want to remind people of, let's say you're in a day like you are today, okay? And let's say that you bought yesterday evening or a day or two ago uh, a small handful of Bitcoin, Okay. And let's say that you've gone through today and yesterday and you've experienced the gains and you bought in at like 13000 and now we're up over 15000 You have made a profit. Now, you may say to yourself, hey, let's just let's just for example's sake, right, just for an example, say you had $100 worth of Bitcoin and a la the example, let's say you made $80 on that. OK, and in that eighty dollars, you've got one hundred and eighty bucks. Eighty of that is a gain. Well, let's say that you don't have any cash in your PayPal account. So you're now going to convert some of that one eighty because you're like, hey, man, I made some money on my crypto. I'm going to buy lunch through my crypto today. So I'm going to convert, you know, let's say twenty five bucks for lunch and I convert that over, sell that off. I've got twenty five bucks in my app. Now I can pay for lunch. Right. OK. You pay for lunch. What you need to understand is, is that you had an $80 gain on that Bitcoin. If you had $100 and you gained 80 bucks, you have $80. If that happens enough to you while you're in the, in the process of buying and holding crypto in your app, and 
exchange for that matter, but specifically talking about PayPal here, you're paying a sales tax when you buy that crypto. You're also flipping the crypto out for a small transaction fee to your cash to buy lunch. And then at the end of the year, if this happens to the tune that it's over $600, you're going to have to report capital gains. Don't believe it. It's still true because it's right down here. Please note that there may be tax consequences for any gain or loss you incur when you sell your crypto assets. I want to thank James Rule XRP for sending me some screenshots last night. I had the burning question, and I hadn't had time to dig into it right at that moment, but he must have been reading my mind because he sent me a couple screenshots, and I was like, oh, James, this is magic. I was like, you know, we started having a small, quick conversation about whether there was capital gains in there. He hadn't seen any. It caused me to dig down deeper on it today, and then I found this. And this, I feel, is enormous, and you need to know it, and you need to make sure you understand it because the more you take and flip your crypto as you buy it and hold it for returns and gains and then start to cash some of that out because like, hey man i don't need to spend my own money i could spend some of this this money i've made that's like free money off the bitcoin i was holding you know just be careful and make sure you understand that there are tax consequences that you will be responsible for at the end of the year. Now, what I haven't found so far looking through this information is most exchanges will give you a printout of all your buy, sell, hold, and all that information so you can actually file all your transaction data for your tax info. Uh, I haven't seen that here, although they do tell you that Paxos Trust Company and maybe other pro providers will help them with the crypto buy sell side and all of that. So uh, it, it remains to be seen as if they will provide an end of year statement. But it seems to me they have absolutely taken their self out of the equation with that line that I've got highlighted right there for you. And it's important that you understand it'll cost you a lot more than just lunch if you're not paying very close attention to what you're doing with your crypto all right now let's go into changing gears here a little bit and this is a reminder that reinforces this from clinton donnelly the crypto tax fixer we're going to have clinton donnelly back on this show very soon because of all of this paypal news and some news we're about to get into here and you know it's just good to stay up on these things. Things are changing very quickly. He says, any attempt to introduce cryptocurrency into day-to-day -day commerce for, uh, faces significant obstacle in the form of U.S. tax system. I'll say that's true. There you go. Amen. The IRS treats any crypto transaction as a taxable event. A coffee from a crypto account could be forced to declare a capital gain. Again, that is reinforcing everything I just shared with you about PayPal and using crypto to buy lunch. Now, Barry Silver, shout out to Barry Silver and Grayscale Investment Fund, which is kicking major butt over there. The U.S. dollar is collapsing in value against Bitcoin today. Well... You know, we did make that correlation. You know, Cryptopolis was on the show and he made that correlation and shared with us that he sees the correlation between the dollar index, the Dixie, the dollar index, which shows that when the dollar strong, crypto's down. And when the dollar is not is weakening, we see crypto take off. And he is pointing to that today. So shout out to Barry Silbert. Come on in. Bitcoin hit fifteen thousand dollars. Let's get into this conversation because you're going to like this one. So shout out to I trust capital guys check them out for an IRA crypto IRA they're the best in the business Bitcoin $15,030 Ethereum $409 XRP is 24 cents and currently falling like a manhole cover from the sky <laughs> but here's the question though okay so here's the question and the question is like this is a chart from Bitcoin this is a all-time chart back from 2014 13 and on up to today and what i looked at here was simply this when we had the bull run of 2017 2018 okay we had the price there on december 17th was nineteen thousand three hundred sixty five dollars and 49 cents according to coin market cap december 17th 2017 now Bitcoin has always appeared to be, you know, it not appeared, it has been the leader in in this space. And it is the brand awareness crypto that most people use synonymously with 
referring to all cryptos. Are you talking about Bitcoin? How many times has that happened to you? We're trying to ask somebody if they're into cryptocurrency. Oh, you mean that the Bitcoin? <laughs> be like, well, there's more than 7,500 coins out here currently in the market today. And the funny thing about that is, is I can tell you for a fact, sitting in this chair, the world doesn't need 7,590-some cryptocurrency. So a lot of these are going to go away sooner rather than later, I believe. And the good part to that is, is that we're going to see, I believe, as we get this designation that Whatever it is, I believe will help XRP gain ground and really find its place and have that designation classification that will help that particular asset get the use case utility that it needs to help really drive the value. Now, coming back to Bitcoin, December 17th, $19,365.49. What's interesting to me is today we're over 15000 And again, as I just showed you, XRP is not responding. Yeah, dead on arrival, it looks like. Well, the reality is, is I'm being tongue in cheek because I don't believe that for a second. Because really, when I look at the charts and history, I come here and I go, okay, let's go. So we go to the chart, the XRP chart. That was December 17th for Bitcoin. When I look at XRP, when it peaked out at $3.82, I think it was 84, but you know what? I'm going to leave the two cents to whatever. But <laughs> who's arguing over details? But the reality here for me is simply this. January 4th, 2018, we had the high of XRP. Not on the same day as Bitcoin, but in fact, what we saw was uh, it ended up being 19 days after Bitcoin's peak. 19,003, and then we saw that on December 17th, and then on January 4th, just 19 days after, XRP hits 382. Now... I don't know where we are, and we're not able to determine just as of yet, are we back in that moment? But it does look like we are leaning hard into a run for Bitcoin. It is well above the uh, technical analysis, uh, support and resistance, and it's really pushing hard at this point. So, you know, my question is, is one, are we on the precipice of a massive bull run as this bull market is beginning, are we going to see a bull run ensue here? And if so, will we see that lagging indicator just like we did in 27, 20, uh, 2017 and 2018, where we see like a 19 to 20 some day window after Bitcoin hits a peak and then we see XRP push to its peak? You know, uh, you know, I don't know. History doesn't always repeat itself, but it's, at the very least, it certainly rhymes. OK, so th these are things to certainly look out for, I believe. So when I look at that and I count, you know, okay, count out, you know, OK, we got to pay attention here to what goes on, because if Bitcoin goes to that high again, you know, will it push through that high or will it pull back? Right. Will it find resistance there or will it find, you know, support and more buying power? That's going to be the interesting thing. And one of the other things we will look at that as we do that is the dollar strength while all of this is happening. Very key component is Cryptopolis. Cryptopolis has pointed out. The other thing I want to ask you is, is that, you know, in just another 20 days or so, uh, or after November 20th, so really in another 15 days, we had the Federal Reserve back on October 23rd propose a new rule that changes not only the amount that has to be uh, uh I guess, shared or revealed uh, from $3,000 to $250 for any transfers that go outside the United States, lowering the threshold. But they've also in that same proposal, Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, FinCEN, and the Federal Reserve have made a proposal to widen the agency's definition of money to explicitly include cryptocurrencies. November 20th, it'll be 30 days. It says the Fed is seeking public comment due within 30 days of the proposal being published in the Federal Register. 
the former logbook of the U.S. government, individuals can provide feedback online via email. My question here is, is that we're, you know, like I said, November 20th, it'll be 30 days from the day that this article was published. I don't know if it's a 31 days and the definition is amended, but it does sound like we're very close to that kind of a window there. It's a tight window that once they get the public comment uh, closed off after 30 days, they're pretty much going to do what they're going to do, which is expand the definition, it looks like. And when they do, what does this chart look like? What will this chart look like? If they expand the definition of money in the Federal Reserve and FinCEN to explicitly include cryptocurrencies, where does Bitcoin stop and where does XRP start? And what does this market look like when there is clear away definition from the Federal Reserve and the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network that cryptocurrency is money? All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Something is afoot, and it's nothing but upside for anybody in crypto from where I'm sitting. Not financial advice. Hit the like and subscribe. Make sure you share with somebody you know. Leave a comment below and check out all the links in the comment section and the uh, uh, description box for everything that you may want or need. It's all products and services that I've used, and they are vetted links to really great companies. So make sure you check them out. The other thing I wanted to tell you guys is while this is happening and crypto is starting to boil, about to boil over, make sure you go sign up for Link to l-i-n-q-t-o link to the premier company private investing made simple make sure you go over and sign up for them they are the premier company for private equity and blockchain and crypto is hands down if you're interested, sign up. You do have to be an accredited investor, but you don't have to be an accredited investor to join a great community. So make sure you do that too. All right, guys, take care. I will catch all of you on the next one.